One Wintry Night by Ruth Bell Graham, illustrated by Richard Jesse Watson. Chapter 5 Eden Lost The boy's eyes were solemn as he listened. The cat, no longer curled up, was sprawled out across the boy, sound asleep. Would you like a cup of hot chocolate? The woman asked. No, thank you, ma'am. What happened next? That evening, in the cool of the day, Adam and Eve walked in the garden. Adam, God called, where are you? Adam and Eve looked at each other in terror. Always before they had run to meet him, but now they were shaking. For the first time, they did not want to be near to God. They wanted to run away, to put their fingers in their ears and pretend they didn't hear him. So they dashed behind some trees and waited, hoping God would go away. It had been like this all day, waiting, feeling afraid, waiting, feeling guilty, waiting some more. Sure, when they tasted the fruit that morning, nothing seemed to happen. Yet God's words kept echoing in their minds. If you eat the fruit, you will die. Perhaps, they thought, God did not really mean it. After all, we are still alive, aren't we? But when God said they would die, he meant their friendship with him would die. They would want to live without him and they would die inside. So they did. Adam and Eve started to feel things they had never felt before, rotten things like fear and anger and shame. Their bodies slowly began to get older. They felt tired, even sick at times, a hint that sooner or later, their earthly lives would be no more. And God knew that after this death, there awaited a death that would never end. Adam slowly came out from behind the trees. Trembling, he said to God, I heard your voice in the garden and was afraid. Have you eaten from the tree I told you not to eat? God asked. Adam replied, The woman you gave me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Eve, God said sternly, what is it that you and Adam have done? The snake did it, Eve protested. He talked me into it. It was his fault. But God is not impressed by excuses. All three had sinned, which means they had disobeyed him. And all three had to be punished. God turned first to the snake. You will crawl on your belly and eat dust all the days of your life. Ever since then, as you well know, snakes have slithered along the ground. Turning to Adam and Eve, God said, Now you will find your life hard. You must leave the garden. Then he made coats of skins to clothe them, for they were shamed. Adam and Eve looked with horror at the skins. They recognized the fur. It had belonged to their animal friends. Darkness fell. Over the garden swept a great storm, low black clouds boiling. The leaves of the testing tree began shaking, and all the other trees bent low in the howling wind. It struck Adam and Eve with such force They ran to keep from falling. So God drove them out of the garden. At the entrance, he placed a tall angel with a flashing sword to block the way back. Outside Eden, life was cold and hard. Instead of simply reaching up into the trees for dinner, Adam and Eve had to plant seeds and pull weeds to raise their own food. Working was exhausting. Thorns and bugs thrived. Rottenness, decay, germs. 
All these ugly things came as a result of Adam and Eve's sin. The earth and all who lived on it were under a curse. The Garden of Eden had been Adam and Eve's home, but what really made them feel at home was the loving presence of their Heavenly Father. God himself had been their true home. Now all was lost. Adam and Eve were the world's first homeless people. This is the end of chapter 5 of One Wintry Night. If you are enjoying this read aloud and would like to hear more, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends.